So this is the first drawing. Now, it's not that there's anything wrong with this drawing. I make a point of making just as much effort to get things such as the perspective correct in both drawings. But this is the drawing where I think at the end, there were some things that could have been done better with the line work. So it's the line work we're thinking about with this drawing, not the accuracy of it. So in a moment, I'll redraw this again in what I think is possibly a more interesting, more helpful way. And then I'll put the two side by side and highlight the differences and some of the ways that I think when I draw to help make these differences possible. So we'll just watch the rest of this drawing. And then we'll get to see it with the second one. In fact, I do a better job with this lamppost than I did in the supposedly better version. And now for the second version. So here's my second take on drawing the same scene. Now see if you can't spot some of the technique differences in how I draw this and what effect, what impact they have overall visually on the finished drawing. But as I said, I'm taking just as much care with both drawings, with accuracy, with things such as perspective. The differences are really going to be line work differences. As you can see, I make a mistake there with the stonework divisions. So for everyone who thinks I never make a mistake, no, I usually just try and edit them out or correct them, but there's not much I could do there with those. And I certainly wasn't going to start again. It's a really helpful thing to learn just to push through mistakes so that you realize they're not so obvious at the end. If you always start again, you never discover that. So we'll just finish this drawing. And maybe you've spotted some of the differences in how I'm doing it and what I'm doing. But in a moment, I'll compare the two side by side and I'll highlight the ways in which the line work is different in this one to the first one. I get the scale wrong, another mistake with this lamppost. It's actually much more accurately drawn in the first video. It's just too large here and I think it actually draws attention to itself because of that. But again, it's not as obvious at the end. Do you think you've spotted any of my line technique differences yet? Here are our two drawings side by side. The first drawing is on the left and the second drawing is on the right. Now, while there are minor differences in the perspective and in the scale of both, this one on the left is a bit larger, for instance, none of that was intentional. So what are the aspects of the line work in the second drawing, which I think help give it a more engaging, more interesting visual effect? Firstly, there were a number of points where I was very careful not to do heavy straight lines. If we look in our reference, we can see that these stones are either very large chamfered blocks or it's some sort of render that's been sculpted in this way. But whichever it is, the effect is, is that we very clearly see the indentations at the end of each row. And that helps to convey something of the monolithic nature of the stonework or the appearance of stonework in this wall. 
And by doing a straight line down here and a straight line down there, I really rob the effect of that. So you might have noticed when I did these lines down here, I had a sense of where the line was going, but instead of going like this, I just took it in a dotted line. Now, I didn't know where those dots were going to line up in terms of these courses, but they did give me a chance to have a lighter effect in parts and to indicate indentations in a way I couldn't in this drawing. It can be really helpful to avoid long straight lines, particularly very early in a drawing, because they really can limit our choices for detail later on. Perhaps the most obvious difference in my line work is that I've used the same pen in all of this drawing. It's a 0.5 millimeter pen. Whereas in this drawing, I use the 0.5 millimeter pen for these closest details, this building, the bridgeway, this lamp. But then I switch to a 0.3 for these further details. So a lighter line helps give the sense of distance because further things aren't as clear as closer things. The other thing I did, and this is perhaps a little more subtle, is that with all of this detail here in the stonework, I tried to draw it as accurately as I could. As you can see, it's the same sort of stonework as here, but because it's further away, of course, it looks lighter. I see here I missed doing the, the bits in between such as that, but I tried to place all those lines in place here. In this one, I used a much lighter touch with my line work. A lot of the lines don't actually go all the way across the space they need to cross, and I'm very patchy in other lines such as the vertical lines, particularly the further away we move. And again, it's this sense of the detail is less obvious when things are further away. And again, this is the details are less obvious the further away something is. And so my line work can actually help create that illusion by drawing less detail and drawing it more lightly. Another point, in both drawings, I drew a fair amount of detail, but in this one, I did ignore some of the closest detail, such as the carved texture on this very lowest course of stonework. And I took the time to include it here. And sometimes I see drawings where detail such as this has not been done, or it's not being done very comprehensively, simply because it takes a little bit of time to do. My personal feeling is when I choose a drawing, then I make a commitment to doing a, as good an effort with that subject as I can. And if it's a complex scene with complex texture, I accept the fact that it's going to take me longer to do a drawing. However, another little tip, by doing more detail of the detail in this closest part, I was able to just suggest it in this further part, which is just a little bit further away and with the distraction of shade over it as well. And again, more detail here and more detail here means that this strip down here really does feel closer to us than the rest of the drawing. Possibly this point is a little more big picture than just line work. But when we draw buildings, we often have this challenge of what's behind the glass, particularly if we're closer and we can actually see in. It's not so difficult if there's a uniform darkness behind the glass, but that certainly isn't always the case. And there is no shortcut to working out what we do there. And because this was a line work drawing and I wasn't going to use tone, then I had to take the time to suggest the details behind the glass. And that does give a sense of depth that we don't get in the first one, where this is very much a flat wall and we almost bounce off it. Whereas here, we do penetrate slightly into the building which again gives a greater sense of closeness and reality to this strip of the scene that's closest to us. This doesn't need to happen down here. If I were drawing this again, I'd take a little more care when I was drawing these window pane divisions to keep a cleaner, whiter space within them and then doing this hatching around them to preserve that whiteness just to because the thing I'm not happy with is not having taken that care, I have now obscured 
what in my reference is a very clearly defined part of the window. All these things, of course, are a matter of taste. And there may be some of you saying, I actually prefer the first one, not the second one. And that's great. But if we're aware of the effect of these different techniques when we draw, then for any drawing we're doing, we can make choices with our line work to create the effect that we would most like to do in that drawing. So I hope this has been helpful. I'm Stephen Travers. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.